scriptures talk about a blessedness that happens to a man whose delight is in the law of God. So as someone says, it says, but his delight is in the law of God. And doth he meditate day and night. He says that that man is like a tree planted by the rivers of water, whose leaves do not wither, and who bears fruit in every season. As you are about listening to this message, we believe that your life is going to be like that man planted by the rivers of water. Your leaves are forever going to bear. And we know that your, your season will not pass by. You will forever shine and you will forever bear fruit. We have a lot of content to share with you. So we would entreat you to subscribe to this channel as well as like us. Hit that notification bell to receive more updates from us because we know that whatever content here is going to set you on calls at every time. It's going to make you attain whatever stature that Christ wants you to attain. Thank you. That for without faith it is impossible to please him. For he that cometh to God must come believing that he is. That means he exists and to he is the rewarder of them that diligently seek him <clears throat> hallelujah so I'm just encouraging someone when you look at your life and you look at the many things that you have to do for the kingdom for your family it's easy for your heart to fail because you'll be asking questions like where will I get this money from where will I get the access you know that is not your concern. That is not your assignment. You only fear if you are alone. This is a lesson for someone. The Bible says the Lord walking with them. There is no limit to how far a believer can go when he holds your hand. That's the secret. Verify who is holding your hand. If it is a man holding your hand, it's dangerous even though God will use men. But he has to be the one who holds your hand. But if he does hold your hand, ladies and gentlemen, there is no limit. You will look small, but small you will do incredible things. Things that only God can do. That is why at the end of it all, the glory goes to him. Because you see, when you are added in that equation, with you alone, the equation will not add up. It will not make sense why it should be successful with you alone but God becomes the invisible and the larger part of that success equation hallelujah I just felt to stir someone's heart you cannot keep doubting God over everything you're not believing God for nothing how will I pay my children's school fees my uncle is not willing to give me money how will I build that ministry with integrity no how will I build that business you can trust God. We're not the first to do it. The Bible says the things that are written aforetime, they are for our learning so that we through patience and the comfort of scripture might find hope. What hope? That if he did it before, Jesus the same yesterday, today, and forever. Let me speak to someone, cheer up. God himself will reveal his glory in and through your life. In the name of Jesus. Amen. Apostle, you are not aware. I have a special project I'm doing and it's in hundreds of millions or maybe billions of Naira. Are you really the first to embark on such a thing? Whether your budget is 100,000 or 1 billion, it's still faith that will bring it. Hallelujah. Even if you are a thief, you have to believe in something. You have to believe in the process of wickedness and corruption enough to act it out for it to work are we together you will not be disappointed yeah. in the name of jesus christ yeah. tonight i want you to pay attention um i'm committed to teaching you the truths that help to mature and grant us grace 
our excelling in the kingdom is based on our knowledge number one of God Almighty and of course Jesus his son but then it is also based on our knowledge of the laws of the kingdom I have taught you and I will continue to teach you that the laws of the kingdom even the laws of the spirit bring predictability to the believers experience are we together yes laws systematize your results so that you are no longer shadow boxing you can have predictable results in the kingdom by engaging the laws of the spirit when i put my mic on i did not expect it to not work i knew it was going to work i didn't have the time to verify because i'm not just believing it will work i have come to trust the mechanism that makes it work so I can take the risk to come up on stage before putting it on. The question is, what if it failed? Are we together? You must get to a point where you understand the ways of God. Faith is not based on nothing. Faith is not even based on emotion. Faith is not based on blind, bold face. It has to rest upon something. That something. It's not just the word of God, generically speaking. When we say the word of God, it means many things to many people. But it is not just the word of God, generically speaking. It must rest on the revelation of the mysteries of the kingdom. You see, your faith has to rest upon the revelation. Faith meaning your conviction and the corresponding action of obedience you take based on that conviction. So every time you say, I know God will do this, that is not a very complete faith process until and unless you tell us what your conviction is standing upon. I know God will do it for me. Why? Ah, no, God is too faithful to fail. What does that mean? You didn't lie, but based on how, how are you sure he's too faithful to fail? You see, the only basis for the believer's faith is what is written not what is assumed you can't have faith based on assumption i know god will not fail me i know god will not fail me i know that this will work based on what if you cannot show me based on the mysteries of the kingdom apostle i'm giving i know i'll prosper what makes you believe that your giving will prosper i know giving works i what based on what you see, most believers are not manifesting what they call Bible faith. It's just a lot of spiritual church activity. What gives you the audacity to believe that if you part with X amount of Naira or dollars, for instance, then you will rise? You have to go to the Word of God. The Bible says there is he that scattereth and yet increaseth. Now you are talking faith. The Bible says there is he that withholdeth more than his meat and tends to penury. And so because I have acted in compliance to that mystery, I have scattered. I expect the integrity of God to ensure that I increase. Now you are talking faith. As against, I know God will do it. You see it now? Most people are not manifesting Bible faith. That's why they continue to go through a plethora of disappointments. Faith. It's not just based on what somebody said. Faith is not just based on what you think. Faith has to be based on what God has said. The mysteries of the kingdom. So Jesus took out time to teach the disciples who would later become apostles of the Lamb, the mysteries of the kingdom. And I'm sincerely committed to helping you understand as God continues to grant grace. If you are not enlightened mentored and educated spiritually to understand the mysteries of the kingdom it will be impossible for the glory and the beauty that was destined to rest upon the saints to find expression in your life god is not a superstitious god are we together the outcome the quality of your life depends upon your accessing light that was the true light the bible says that lighted every man john 1 5 says and the light shineth in darkness and the darkness comprehended it not so when you come to church and the word of god is about to come let your heart be number one excited because another mystery 
will be given to you and you archive these mysteries and you will rise up on the strength of these mysteries and your life will become an incredible testimony of the goodness of God. That people look at your life and they wonder, you become an object of marvel and wonder. Then you can raise others too because you are confident of what you did to have gotten there. If you rise by luck, it's a risk to even you. We rise in this kingdom by light. Are we together? So tonight, one of the mysteries of the kingdom that I want to share with us, among the many you have heard and will hear in the course of this year, this mystery is a very personal revelation to me. And this teaching tonight is dedicated to many people who are asking, Lord, when will my turn come? When will I see the manifestation of your prophetic word over my life? There is something about the character of the kingdom and the operation of God that I want to show you in the name of Jesus Christ. I'm teaching tonight on the reward system of the kingdom. The reward system of the kingdom. I want you to see and to learn how God rewards men in the kingdom. The reward system of the kingdom. The reward system of the kingdom. Hallelujah. Praise the name of the Lord. There are many names that God is called in the Bible. He's called Alpha, for instance, He's called Omega. He is called Jaira. He is called Rapha. God is called Deliverer. God is called Lifter. The psalmist has a, a whole list of various names that God is called. And all these names, as you have learned, describe various dimensions of his operation. The names of God generally capture within them his modus operandi so when you call him jireh for instance you don't expect to be healed under the jurisdiction of that name are we together that name only has to do with being a supplier and making sure that your necessities are met when you call him rafa you do not expect to prosper financially just by rafa rafa has the assignment of ensuring that your health and your bodily vitality is kept in place. And one of the names that the Bible reveals that God has and God is, is the name the rewarder. Hallelujah. This is a very powerful revelation about God. Hebrews chapter 11 and verse 6, please. We read that scripture earlier on, but now let's look at it in context. The Bible says, but without faith, it is impossible to please him. For he that cometh to God must believe that he is. That means that he exists. Second, that he is a rewarder of them. Please say a rewarder of them. It's important to know, number one, that he is a rewarder. Then number two, it's important to know the them he rewards. Because not everybody qualifies for that reward. The Bible never said he's the rewarder of all. He says he's the rewarder of them them that diligently seek him so for starters it's important to know that god rewards please say god rewards that is good news to your soul say it again say god rewards revelation chapter 22 please and verse 12 revelations 22 and verse 12 jesus is speaking here as recorded by john in his vision he says, and behold, I come quickly. Is that in your Bible? And my reward is with me to give to every man according as his work shall be. So God rewards. There is no confusion as to the fact that God rewards. Now listen very carefully. The concept of reward is one that if you are not properly mentored you may reject it because um it seems to put you in a position of guilt as far as your pursuit of god is concerned 
many believers have turned down the possibility of the reward system of the kingdom because they do not want to be trapped in that that mindset that they are seeking god because of things and while we advocate the fact that ultimately our pursuit for god must be because we love him are we together never forget that that we seek god and we pursue the things of the kingdom primarily because we love the lord with all our hearts however it is important for you to come to terms with the fact that in the economy of God, in his dealings with men, he has programmed a system of reward that you must gratefully embrace. Are we together? It is important for you to come to terms with the fact that even though being rewarded is not your primary motivation for the pursuit of God and spiritual things, but that in the character of God as a giver, he cannot deny that there is a possibility of the saints being rewarded. If you are with me, say amen. amen. Because many believers have turned down that possibility of being rewarded. Let me give a definition here and then I begin to tie up a few things. What does it mean to reward? Write it down, please. While examining the reward system of the kingdom, the key part of this teaching is how he rewards. But I just want to put a little background. We have to come to terms with the fact that God rewards. What does it mean to reward? Write it down, please. To reward means to give something to someone. I wrote here, to give something to someone. To reward means to give something to someone in recognition of service, in recognition of effort, in recognition of contribution or achievement. I'll take it again. To reward means to give something to someone in recognition of service, effort, contribution or achievement. One last time. To reward means to give something to someone in recognition of service, effort, contribution, or achievement. So when we say God is a rewarder, it immediately tells you that he does not study the works of men for nothing. Are we together now? The Bible is very vocal as to the fact that God probes into the works of men consistently. And among the many reasons why he does so is because in his heart and in his character is the openness to always reward believers. Now let's see the concept of reward in the Bible. I will use four quick examples. I hope God is helping us already. Number one, let's look at the story of David and Goliath. In 1 Samuel chapter 17, please, give it to us very quickly from verse 24. To justify from scripture that the reward system of the kingdom is a kingdom concept. So we want to see how this played in the kingdom. This was a story of, um, of Goliath and David. Now watch this. Reading 24 to 27. And all the men in Israel, when they saw the man Goliath now, they fled from him and they were so afraid. 25. And the men of Israel said, Have ye seen this man that is come up? Surely to defy Israel is he come up. And it shall be that the man who killed him, the king shall enrich him with great riches and will give him his daughter. Can you imagine? and make his father's house free of tax say rewards here is a beast that is threatening the people of god the nation of israel and the king is saying that whoever is able to bring this man down this threefold reward number one great riches number two he will have access to the king's daughter number three his entire family will be tax free Are we together? 26 now. And David spake to the men that stood by him saying, I'm not going to fight for nothing. What shall be done to the man that killed this Philistine and take away the reproach from Israel? For who is this uncircumcised Philistine that he should defy the armies of the living God? The last verse now. And the people answered him after that manner. 
so shall it be done to the man that killeth him. Say rewards. David was not only motivated by his covenant with God. I hope you know that now. You see that he took out time to acknowledge the fact that there was a reproach upon Israel. But he was honest and open enough and the Bible records it. What shall be done to the man who makes this happen? Taking away this reproach from Israel. Example number two. In the New Testament now, Matthew chapter 19 from verse 27 to 30. Matthew chapter 19, 27 to 30. Peter speaking for the disciples. Even though Jesus told them, come follow me and I will make you fishers of men. The truth is that they followed him because they loved him, hopefully. But somewhere in their pursuit, it was very clear that they expected more than heaven. Are we together? And then answered Peter and said unto him, Behold, we have forsaken all and followed you. What shall we have therefore? Jesus would have said, You are such a stupid man. You have exposed the wickedness of your heart. Now I know that you are a self-centered disciple. You should be grateful that I called you to follow me. But watch what Jesus said. Jesus answered and said, Verily I say unto you, that ye which have followed me in the regeneration when the son of man shall sit in the throne of his glory ye shall also sit upon 12 stones judging the 12 tribes of israel hallelujah verse 29 and everyone that has forsaken houses brethren sisters father mother or wife or children or land for my name's sake Jesus is speaking now, shall receive an hundredfold and shall receive everlasting life. Last verse 30. But many that are first shall be last and last shall be first. So Jesus is telling them that, listen, there is a provision for you that everyone who forsakes me, in fact, one of the synoptic accounts says he will receive all of this in this life. Then he says in the world with persecution and then in the world to come life everlasting. So the apostles expected, gratefully so, to be rewarded. The next example, 2 Timothy chapter 4. 2 Timothy chapter 4. We'll read 7 and 8. 2 Timothy chapter 4. Paul expected a reward. Here's what he said. I have fought a good fight of faith and truly he fought. Truly he fought. Do you agree? I have finished my cause. I have kept the faith. Verse 8. Let's read together. Henceforth is laid up for me a crown of righteousness, which the Lord, the righteous judge, shall give me at that day, and not to me only, but unto all them that love his appearing. So Paul expected a reward. You would see Paul drive himself and go through all kinds of things, died many times, came back to life. Are we together? And he said, listen, I have fought the good fight of faith. I expect a reward. So you see that God's reward principle I wrote here is a divine principle, but it is also a human principle. The reward system is both a human principle and a divine principle. This is very important. Why does God reward men? Why does God reward men? And in fact, why do men reward men? Because I told you it's both a divine principle and then it is a human principle. Why do men reward men? And why does God reward men? The simple answer is that we walk by motivation. Human beings walk whether towards God or towards fellow men. We walk by motivation. This is very important. The human spirit must be motivated to bend over backwards and inconvenience themselves to accomplish strides and make things happen upon the earth. We walk by motivation. Hallelujah. If you are given a job, on one hand you are happy that you're now employed 
But the truth is that the company has employed you because they needed your services. And now that you've been employed, there's a letter that is given to you that spells out the condition for your employment, but also includes the reward package. Am I right on that? And that that reward package, even at that time, is not final. It keeps adjusting as you are being promoted. When people shout about not being promoted, largely what they are shouting about is that their effort with respect to the reward system does no long, it, it no longer matches. Is that true? It doesn't match again. Why does God reward men? Because we walk by motivation. Now, I wrote something down here before we go to the reward principle properly. According to scripture, very quickly, there are three main things that God rewards. Number one, God rewards diligent pursuit. Please write it down. God rewards diligent pursuit. According to Hebrews 11 verse 6, the Bible says he's the rewarder of them that diligently seek him so god rewards diligent pursuit any kind and any dimension of diligent pursuit is rewarded jeremiah 29 and verse 13 jeremiah 29 and verse 13 it says and ye shall seek me and find me when ye shall search for me with all your heart what does god reward and what do men reward also diligent pursuit number two what does God reward faithfulness faithfulness God rewards faithfulness just write for reference Matthew 25 from verse 14 to 30 the, the parable of the talents remember he gave unto one five he gave unto one two he gave unto one one and then he came back to probe the diligence of the people and the one with five talents the one with two all of them returned back and they were rewarded but the person who had one talent complained and he was thrown away and he was called a wicked and unprofitable servant so god rewards faithfulness galatians 6 verse 9 Galatians 6 verse 9 and let us not be weary in well-doing is that in your Bible it says for in due season we shall reap if we faint not so well-doing is a seed and there is a harvest attached to it the Bible says we will reap in due season what does God reward faithfulness the Bible says in 1 Corinthians chapter 4 from verse 1 and 2. 1 Corinthians 4, 1 and 2. Let a man so account of us as of the ministers of Christ and stewards of the mysteries of God. Verse 2. It says, moreover, it is required in stewards that a man be found faithful. If God rewards faithfulness, it also means that men reward faithfulness. When you are faithful, you can be sure that you are connecting yourself to God's reward system. Number three, what does God reward? According to scripture, the works of men. Write it down, please. God rewards the works of men, particularly the purity. The purity and the motif behind the things that you do. And he also rewards the, I wrote here, the degree of compliance to patterns. God rewards the works of men. He rewards the purity of your motif. And he also rewards the degree to which you complied to the patterns. This is powerful. God rewards the works of men. The purity of your motif. What is motivating your service? And then your degree of compliance. Revelations 22 and verse 12. 22, 12. It says, Behold, I come quickly, and my reward is with me, to give every man according as his work will reveal. According as his work will reveal. Very, very powerful. 
Hallelujah. In 1 Corinthians chapter 3 from verse 12, Apostle Paul began to teach us a very deep mystery. 3 from verse 12. 1 Corinthians 3 from verse 12. 1 Corinthians 3 from verse 12. Now, if any man build upon this foundation, gold, silver, precious stones, wood, hay, stubble, 13, reading to 15. Every man's work shall be made manifest, for the day shall declare it, because it shall be revealed by fire. And the fire shall try or test every man's work of what sort it is. 14. If any man's work abide which he had built thereupon, he shall receive a reward. The reward is only if the work remains. The last verse, it says, If any man's work shall be burned, he shall suffer loss, but he himself shall be saved yet as of fire. So God reveals. God rewards our motif, the motif behind the things that we do. That is why you can find out, for instance, in church, two people can be cleaning this pulpit. And to your natural eyes, they are all doing the same thing. But you will be surprised that their rewards in the spirit will differ sometimes east and west. Because God does not just reward the activity. He rewards, number one, the motif. And then number two, the degree of compliance to patterns. Is someone learning already? So I've been able to establish the fact that God rewards, that as much as God does not want our consciousness of reward to be the primary and the ultimate motivation behind our loving and seeking Him. It is a dangerous thing to be motivated by anything above love. The Bible says there remained these three, faith, hope, and love. It calls love the greatest. It calls love the bond of perfection. The moment you are motivated by any other thing higher than love, already you have tampered with the equation of rest and you have tampered with the equation of divine excellence. All things rest upon love. Are we together now? So our pursuit, let me repeat one last time. That in dealing with God and even in dealing with ourselves, our ultimate drive must be that we love God with all our hearts and it is an honor to see him lifted and to see him glorified. But I'm being honest and open with you that God as a fair and a benevolent king and father has designed a reward system within this kingdom and it is important for believers to be aware of God's reward system because you see if you do not know the reward system of the kingdom you cannot place a demand on it and many things will go wrong in your life while you are serving God it will make God look unfair as far as your work with him is concerned are we together one of the many names that God is called in the Bible is the righteous judge because he rewards now this is the meat of my teaching and I want you to please pay attention. God's reward principle. I want to teach you how God rewards men. Now that you know that he rewards, now that you know why we need to be rewarded, because there has to be a token, expressions of consolation to our Christian experience. Most believers know that God rewards but they do not know how the reward system of the kingdom works. And so they, are, they live very sincere lives, holy and righteous lives, but they do not live rewarded lives. God's reward principle. Hallelujah. Mark chapter 1. I'll begin my reading from verse 32. Please pay attention now down to 37. I want to show you how God programmed his reward system to work. And in the name of Jesus Christ, may your eyes be open to see. Amen. At evening, when the sun did set, they brought unto him all that were diseased and them that were possessed with devils. 33. All the city was gathered together at the door. Can you imagine? And he healed many that were that were sick of diverse diseases and cast out many devils and suffered not the devils to speak because they knew him 35 
And in the morning, rising up a great while before day, he went out and departed into a solitary place and there prayed. 36. And Simon and they which and they that were with him followed after him. Take note of that statement. Followed after him. 37, the last verse now. And when they had found him, they said unto him, All men seek for thee. Help us, Holy Spirit, in the name of Jesus Christ. Now, please look up. God designed the reward system of the kingdom. God designed the reward system of the kingdom to function based on the discovery, the development, and the deployment of your gift. God designed the reward system of the kingdom. Listen carefully, please. That the reward system of the kingdom was designed to function based on the discovery number two the development or refining number three the deployment of your gift are we together the bible says the gift of a man is that in your bible the gift of a man make it room for him proverbs 18 and verse 16 the a man's gift he says make it room for him i think um either international standard version or god's word translation would say the gift of a man can open doors thank you D giving a gift can open doors i think god's word translation would say a man's gift can open doors for him it can give him access to important people nlt here says back to kjv please that the gift of a man can make room for him and can bring him before great men many believers do not understand why it looks like in the kingdom where everybody is serving the same god god seems to isolate a few people and to lift them and to honor them as against others not understanding the reward system of the kingdom makes god look unfair until this lecture comes to your spiritual understanding it makes a lot of sense to look at god as one who just manifests favoritism lord it looks like you rejected everybody from this family it looks like you have a personal problem with my ministry it looks like you have a personal problem with my business why is it that i'm, I'm not able to rise and make maximum kingdom impact you may love god sincerely you will get the benefits of loving God. But there are certain things in this kingdom that are rewards. And if you do not understand the reward system of the kingdom, you may live a sincere but frustrated Christian life. Hallelujah. Write this down, please. The word gift there does not just mean a presentation, like something you package. The word gift there also means your value. V-A-L-U-E. Write it down, please. The word gift there also means your skill. It also means your potential. It also means your ability. I'll take it again. Your value, your skill, your potential, your ability. Everything in your life that constitutes an advantage to you and can become a blessing as far as God's program is concerned, and humanity is called your gift everything that constitutes an advantage to your life and can be deployed to serve the purposes of God and to be a blessing to humanity is what the Bible refers to as your gift so your gift is not just something that you hand over no it, it it's it's a word that captures holistically your value your skill listen carefully whether spiritual whether technical whatever it is in the scripture we read mark chapter 1 the bible tells us when we begin to read verse 32 that at evening people came to jesus watch this now they didn't just come to sit down and waste their time the bible says they brought people who were diseased 
They brought people who were possessed with devils. I wish we had time to act a little drama here. Imagine right now on this stage, are we together? Having someone who is a madman, someone who is sick, let's say with an incurable disease, and the family would have spent millions of naira trying to remedy for that situation. And here comes a man that they hear. Do you know, at the point of need, you have the faith to take unbelievable risks. At the point of need, you will, when they tell you you are about to lose someone, and they say if you can get to Port Accord by tomorrow morning, there is a consultant, he's one of the top 50 in the whole world, and I mean he can solve this problem. You will be surprised where you will invent energy from. Even if it means to drive all through the night, not by a luxurious bus. It's better for you, based on that situation, to beg an arm robber on the road than to sit down and not do anything. It is amazing what people can do when they are pushed to the wall. So, don't take for granted that the Bible says they brought to him those that were diseased. Remember the guy that they tore a roof to put someone there? One thing you need to know with men is that at the point of need, people are desperate. Let me repeat myself again. At the point of need, people are desperate. Whether spiritual need, whether financial solutions, whether technical solutions, the moment people are in need and they cannot solve that problem for themselves, they become desperate and it puts them in a position where they are ever willing to reward, provided the solution is guaranteed. Is someone learning tonight? Respectfully speaking, I've had the honor of praying for people. I am amazed at the sacrifices that people make because they hear that I'm around or they hear that I can be available either to pray for them and sometimes I'm humbled. Our international guests here can travel from distances as far back as Australia, not for a miracle service. And they say, Apostle, I flew just to have, if I could have five minutes with you, I know my life would change. Now, I'm not just excited that they flew to see me. I'm seeing the burden of trust that someone can leave a travel over two days journey to come and spend five minutes. Who do you think you are? If they perceive you to be that valuable, then it's impossible for you to be without reward. The Magi heard that a young boy, a young baby was born and that by prophecy, that baby would be a king. The Bible says they shut down on their activities and they carried gifts. Is that in your Bible? Of gold, frankincense and myrrh. It's one thing for them to go and worship, but then they started searching for where baby Jesus was. Not miracle worker Jesus, baby Jesus. Until they found him and they worshipped and they gave him those gifts. You have no idea the reward system that can stand at the corridor of your destiny when value is not a question. Are we together now? Now, we live in a world that is largely superstitious, unfortunately, even for Africa. And while I believe in the supernatural, absolutely and forever, it is important for us to define intelligently and spiritually the modus operandi of God's reward system so that we don't leave ourselves in all kinds of blind superstition that will keep leaving us in pain and regret. Are we together? Write this down, please. Your value put in bracket every other thing I said, your ability, your gift, your value decides who pursues you and decides the extent of your reward. Your value decides who pursues you or who seeks you and decides the extent of your reward. Hallelujah. It is amazing and even incredible from a professional standpoint that there are certain professions in this nation and globally speaking that if you do pay the price to be able to attain onto a point of mastery in that profession, 
The only thing that can stop you from rising are demon spirits. But as far as the communication of value is concerned, where your, your own is to labor and to pay that price. There is such a demand and that people will be willing. One time I had the privilege to pray for someone who um, they wanted to fly somebody, one of their sons or so, to fly him to one of these nations, I think India or the US, for a kidney transplant. And so I was discussing with them, and when they told me what they were going to spend, plus accommodation, because it's not that you just go there and turn around and come back, plus accommodation and everything, my heart almost dropped. I said, all this, and the person who is going to do it will be somebody like me. But is he really like me? There's something that person has acquired. And while you are threatened, the person will calm you down and say, that's all right. And within two, three days, they have done a complicated surgery. Are we together now? How do you expect to reward that person who has now preserved a life the same way you would otherwise? Now, I'm speaking in a society where meritocracy is respected. I'm not speaking is with the assumption of a corrupt free wickedness free society are we together because the template we have in africa does not make my teaching to make sense to many people because someone by wickedness can access a level of wealth when you now say where are those who are rich you will stand up it did not come by value and most young people right now are already throwing away value and the dignity of kingdom integrity because it looks cheaper and faster to bend over backwards hallelujah so from a professional standpoint the bible says that this man ran and came to jesus one time in his crusade he was teaching in a room and they came wanting him to heal a man and those guys could not have their way it was clear that nobody would give them attention please can we move this crippled man to jesus they said don't even disturb us you don't know the situation that i have to and they said you know what we will negotiate with the owner of this house let's tear the roof my goodness imagine that man. and jesus called that act of madness faith that men can be so desperate I always give this example, um, sorry to bring bad memories, but during the, um, I think it was NSAS, no, 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 was it NSAS protest? Where they boggled warehouses across several states. Most people in that state did not know that those things were warehouses or they passively, they never paid attention to how people discovered the warehouses with bags of rice and indomie and you needed to see unity without any salmon some who could fly are we together i mean gentlemen will rise and you would see people nobody asks about tribe and religion again it was intelligence with coordination no ushers no protocol no worship team to charge any atmosphere but i mean you listen 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 I'm just showing you that that is how far human being can be organized at the point of desperation. Imagine what men will do for you when they discover the unique expression of God's gift upon your life and its ability to contribute to their well-being. Most of us take for granted and we have no idea the problems that people go through every day. Now, you see several people come here by the grace of God and thousands others following online. Let me tell you the truth. It is true that most people love Jesus and they love me and I'm grateful for that. But let me submit to you that nobody will come and sit down and waste their three, four, five hours. From as early as eight o'clock, nine o'clock, there are people here sitting down as though they don't have what to do. You think human beings are that stupid? Say value one encounter genuine encounter by the spirit and pages of your life can open just like that it was said during the days of 
the, the revival of God's generals, that meetings would be happening maybe 6 p.m. and by 12, 2 p.m. you would see people queuing up, patiently waiting, praying in tongues and inventing all kinds of skills to draw energy until that time. Listen, can I tell you, the proof that you are not valuable or you have not developed your value is that your absence means nothing to those around you. When your absence means nothing to those around you, it means your presence is not contributing anything serious. Please listen carefully. I'm provoking you for a reason. You know how valuable you are by the reaction that happens with your absence. Jesus disappeared for three days and the disciples wanted, they were almost dying. They had to say, look, let's go back to fishing. And when Jesus came up, there are many of you, if in your workplace, you decide to take a break for two weeks, you will return back and they'll say, it looks like we've not seen your face. You say, well, I've not been around. You say, oh, no wonder. But absolutely nothing changed with your absence. That should not be so. You should be such a contributor, first to kingdom come and then to your environment, that the slightest manifestation of your absence will be felt so deeply. That is a sign that you are valuable. Hallelujah. The gift of a man may get room for him and brings him before great people. Listen. When God was preparing me for ministry, this was one of the things I learned, especially from great fathers and veterans like Dr. Miles Monroe. Because at that time, many people had a lot of superstitious approach to ministry. They just believed that once your heart was sincere, without any development, any refinement, you just make sure your heart is pure towards God. Eventually, you will become great. It didn't make even spiritual sense to me. Because Jesus, even though he was the son of God, it took him 30 years of preparation. And the Bible did not hide his diligence. What will the son of God, the logos of God, be doing at the temple at age 12? For 18 solid years, ladies and gentlemen, Jesus was preparing for a ministry of three and a half years. John, the prophet, was in the wilderness even though a prophet from God, he did not spare his training. Can I tell you sincerely, please hear me ladies and gentlemen. There are many of you who have not been able to make full proof of your ministry. Your ministry, they are not just fivefold, but every expression of value that you were sent by God to bring to your world. Because you do not know that your reward depends on your gift. Most people say my reward depends on God. You are not lying, but you need to understand how his economy works. As sincere as you are as a CEO, as born again as you are, if someone comes to tell you I'm a member of Koinonia, please employ me. Let me be um, the person to handle all your finances. I'm honest. You will tell the person as well, eh? Write your prayer point because that is a prayer point and go and drop it at the miracle service, but you will not employ the person. Why? Because even though the person has told you he's a Christian, you will need to be able to vet his proficiency and that without any biases or prejudices. There are many people who downplay the place of value and sacrifice. Listen to me. The reward system of the kingdom, I repeat again, is connected to value years ago this my precious people in the worship team they were itching so much to find expression they wanted to go for meetings any meeting at all and I stopped them I said you are not going anywhere you guys want aside from blessing the Lord you want to be local champions who will be angry competing with one another and fighting and insulting those who go ahead of you that is the trajectory the sad trajectory of mediocres they usually will do very small and not rise then they become frustrated because everyone goes and leaves them they have to coin out a justification and the way they do that is by fighting everyone and everything ahead of them it ought not to be so I remember challenging them and I said, sit down. I love you people, but the songs you are bringing, the nations cannot bless the Lord with that kind of investment. Stay and build yourself.
today to God be the glory. You celebrate what they are doing. You see. And even today, it's not like I'm done with them. Praise God. Remember, it's a thousand cubits. After they measure it, you rest. Then another tape comes again. My dear violinist, when he, he sent me a text to appreciate me, and I said, young man, you are doing well. May God bless you. I said, but go and rehearse. There's so much you need to learn. Don't think because people you played violin, go and rehearse. I know the sound of excellence and quality. Go and rehearse. Build yourself again. Can I tell you, when people raise a very high bar for you, it's because they want the, whole, the nation to celebrate God in your life. This mediocre mentality we have that has endorsed mediocrity, you find out that people never rise. For doing nothing, we keep clapping for ourselves. As a man of God, you preach a sermon that even you, you know that's not what God told you. You know that the Holy Spirit cannot breathe upon such a dull sermon, spiritually and intellectually dull. Okay, forgive yourself and go back and walk. You just assume because somebody who is your friend forever just came and said, what a brilliant sermon. I, and you actually believe that lie. Now, it's not about competition, but you need to charge yourself. I listen to all my teachings for two reasons. One, to be blessed by it, but number two, to make sure I never remain at that level. It is a rule and a covenant without excuse. Listen, until you give your pursuit in life and destiny a business approach, a business approach meaning you have to be strict with yourself. Don't mark yourself, write an exam and organize speech and prize for yourself for doing nothing. There are nations, there are territories. Now God is sending us to the United Kingdom. You can imagine the hunger, tens of thousands of people coming and there comes an ill-prepared preacher not knowing what he's doing. You stand and you don't know what to say. Then you tell them God is going to move, nothing happens. You tell them God will heal, nothing happens. You quote all kinds of wrong scriptures. No. No. Can I tell you, I have taught you that there are many closed doors in our lives that are a sign of God's mercy. Because if that door had opened with our level of ill preparedness, it would take a long time to get those doors to open again. So God closes those doors as a sign of his mercy and challenges you to prepare. Joseph, make sure you are ready for Pharaoh before you ask the wine presser to make him remember you. Because when you stand before Pharaoh, it is a dream to interpret. If Joseph had messed up, he will go back to the prison and remain there forever. I made up my mind that I was not only going to be a spiritual preacher but that my communications will come with a blend of spirituality and intelligence for god's sake that when you are teaching people they must find a point of applicability there must be intelligence no matter the mysticism and how a mysterious what you are communicating is learning from jesus you must be able to break down kingdom mysteries in a way and to a context that people can understand and find a point of applicability in their lives. Are we together? What do you do with the gift of God in your life? Number one, you discover it. I'm showing you the dynamics now because knowing, maybe you write this first, knowing you are gifted is not enough. You must pay the price to refine and develop that gift knowing you are gifted ladies and gentlemen knowing you have skill knowing you are called knowing you are a businessman knowing you are a prophet knowing you are an apostle is not enough paying the price to develop it that is where your honor is and that is where your reward lies the reward is not in the discovery the reward is in the refinement and the deployment let me take it again the reward is not in the discovery 
you are not rewarded for discovering yourself you are not rewarded for discovering your gift you are not rewarded for discovering you are called into ministry you must be able to develop and refine let's talk about development the first thing you do with your gift is to discover the second is development spare me a few minutes as i charge your hearts look up please you want to develop your gift you must be prepared to go through the furnace of affliction the furnace of affliction is not a bad word you know once we hear affliction many people just run away and say i reject it can i tell you sacrifice is the language of champions nobody becomes great at their terms let me use ministry for instance i do not want to speak like i'm bragging but heaven knows and i can tell you uneasy lies the head that wears the crown make no mistake about the glory of god that is revealed in the life of people today whether is accessing the anointing whether is staying on course to find revelation whether is understanding leadership are we together now knowledge is not a gift you buy the truth developing anything is difficult learn that from architecture you can destroy a building in one minute, literally without exaggeration. But it can take you as much as three, four, five years, depending on the kind of structure you're erecting. Building anything is hard. Building men, building stamina, growing in the anointing, building your faith, building your knowledge bank, both spiritually and intellectually. It takes time. This is where many people miss out on it because we have this superstitious idea that just because the Holy Ghost is in my life and I have scripture, automatically with no effort on my own part, I will rise mysteriously, especially because of forces in the kingdom that have not been taught properly. Chiefest among them is favor. I teach favor a lot and I can tell you I'm a living epistle of that mystery. But it does not have told you favor is merited. The idea that it's unmerited is what has deceived people into complacency and laxity. I know my God will do it. Be laughing at me today. Tomorrow you will bend your head in shame. As a prophetic confession, I agree. But with no effort on your own part to work with prophecy, you will be disappointed in multiple folds. I tell you. Are we together? I've seen many people who want to build great ministries, for instance, rather than submitting themselves to learning, to understand the ropes around excelling in ministry. All they are interested in is just a little impartation. Apostle just touched my head and I know everything will go back. I assure you it will be a risk for God to send thousands of people with that bankruptcy of knowledge you do not know what human beings can do when you are not trained to understand the psychology of people it's not only scripture you need to understand the, the kinds of problems that your organization will go through i'm not sure you'll be ready to handle that and so god will teach you he will guide you are we together now yes it pains my heart when I see several believers who seem to admire others and make it look like God just isolated a few people and decided to lift them and has left others to scrounge in mediocrity. No, the Bible says the same Lord, ladies and gentlemen, is rich unto all. It is true that he may give one five talents. It's true that he may give one two talents. But a hundred percent result is possible at any level. Not everybody in truth may have access to an international or a global ministry. This is why God rates men based on the faithfulness, what he gave them. It would be unfair to expect five more talent from the one he gave two talents to. That's why the same commendation he gave the one with five, he gave the one with two. Because within the scope of their ability, they did the same thing. Ladies and gentlemen, please hear me developing your ability will require you to invest time spiritually to invest time intellectually to invest time in terms of physical dissipation of energy 
you want to prepare for a great life you want to prepare for a global ministry you want to prepare to be a global brand be ready to make contact with the spirit your times of prayer i mean rich moments of prayer capacity in the spirit there are certain spiritual burdens you cannot carry until there is a track record of building robust strength in the spirit it will be unfair for you to carry say this line arrays and drop it on a human being just one person it will be unfair because this will be too heavy for one person under normal circumstances so god is not going to trust you with the burden of nations when he sees and vets that you are ill prepared please listen carefully the spirit of god is speaking to us there are families respectfully speaking that may never rise because they have not taken the personal responsibility to know that if we are to rise it is everybody's business and we must take responsibility you have a family of 10 people the men are lazy the women are entitled are we together the parents don't care the younger ones are blaming the elder ones and all of them are blaming demons for the ultimate reason why they are not rising and the demons are surprised because they know what they did and they know what they did not do how could you blame us for everything it's funny but i pray you are getting the message it is very consoling to blame spirits because you can't take them to court it's very consoling to blame spirits because they will not appear and say you are lying this one i did it this one mm -mm. the mediocre excuse is to transfer blame to the realm of the spirit why are you not rising it's because of this and that i used to have one dream and they used to oppress me okay minus the oppression what have you done nothing you give the gentleman hundred thousand the next thing you find him running around eating in a restaurant with people who are millionaires and he's there hundred thousand home and abroad and he's eating too and you are wondering what are you doing here and the reality of the time will take you from that place back to where you were because you've not qualified to get there are we together yes listen very carefully i made up my mind that i would not be praying that god should bring people rather i would be praying that god should build capacity lord build capacity so that when you bring the people i can truly be a blessing to them build capacity so that when i declare over your life when i prophesy over your life that week in and week out as people converge from across the globe it will not be that you are coming to just listen to cunningly devised fables no i challenge all the departments and the workers as they work don't just say this is a spiritual platform maintain the highest level of excellence that can be it is spirituality but these spirits are coming in human bodies. So make sure excellence is maintained at the highest level. Is someone learning now? Tell yourself no excuses. Shout it again. Say no excuses. For as long as you continue to justify mediocrity, you will keep getting angry and jealous and envious of people who are paying a price you are not seeing. Are we together now? Yes. Our world today is full of bitter, angry, and envious people who find pride in pulling others down because they do not know that with, a, with a, the press of diligence, God can reward. The same Lord is rich unto all, but I can tell you not everything in the kingdom is a gift. There are things that are rewards. You are praying five minutes, snoring while you pray that five minutes, living your life carelessly, jumping from pillar to post. And there are others who are paying the price while you are sleeping, they are awake, praying over nations, studying for hours, investing in knowledge. There is a name God is called, the righteous judge. Please listen to me. I say it again, the righteous judge. You can't carry the same level of grace. No, God is not a politician. While others are submitting themselves to mentorship and to learning, you sit down and learn, watch videos, build your spirit, build capacity. I am amazed 
at several men of God, great people who are doing great things, and sometimes they will honorably reach out and just say, Apostle, you know, have a conversation and say, please, I want you to share one or two things with me about this area. And I'm humbled. I'm saying, my God, can you imagine? These people are also doing great things as God has helped them. But look at the, the humility of heart. And there are others who are not going anywhere. They've not started anything, not doing anything. And everybody is their colleague. No. Are we together? The gentleman one day said, Apostle, I don't know if you can give me an opportunity for us to pray together one day. I looked at him with compassion, honestly, and it's not pride. I just said, this, this man. <laughs> what do you think the power of God is? A charm? Do you know what it means to stand and speak over God's people? And the God of the universe begins to honor your speakings. Now, I, I hope you know, I hope you know not to sound proud. God is not a man. Burn that in your spirit. God is not a man. You want to speak over a man's life? Let the gates of your destiny be open. And then it is open. Do you know the kind of sacrifice? This is the point I want us to get. Ladies and gentlemen, so I, I really hate sharing my story because most times um, it, it doesn't achieve what I want it to achieve. It just looks like we are just marketing ourselves and, and, you know, acting arrogant. But I wish I had the liberty to share with you the instances of the sacrifices that this man before you has made. It will be evil for you to believe what is happening is just luck. I repeat, it will be evil for, I don't care whoever, to believe that what you see today is luck. No. There are names, there are titles, there are legends and tales of strength. But only Yeshua will reign forever. To his kingdom there'll be no end. There are names, there are titles, there are legends and tales of strength. Only Yeshua will reign forever. me you want a generation to hear your voice it's more than posting videos on social media now I'm saying this respectfully speaking I want to help my precious generation get out of that garbage and invest in the spirit it takes more than just telling people I am here there is a track record in the spirit let me tell you if heaven does not sign upon your life you will waste your time for nothing upon the earth you believe that people will just come and give you finances like that? Everybody will not dash you. You have to understand the financial system of the kingdom. God can raise men to support you. But you believe that men will be the ones to run your, your life financially? Go and find out how finances work. And bring rest to your life once and for all. The anointing, you need to go and stay with God find out the various wells in the spirit and the skill to fetch and draw from them mm. not every well works the same way just because you learned how to fetch from a particular well the bible says wells of salvation there are different skills to fetch so you will see people who are operating at different frequencies in the spirit is because they have mastered how to draw from the spirit Hallelujah. The sacrifice of fasting, the sacrifice of prayer, the sacrifice of honoring the voice of God, even at your inconvenience. I cannot have told you, I don't know how many times God has given me painful instructions. 
give this, empty this, do this. And sometimes it does not make sense. I shared with you my story last year. When God gave an instruction to sow a seed, I knew that a season was coming and God was opening me up. It was a new dimension in the spirit. I've taught you how to discern when seasons come to an end. An unusual desire to pray. An unusual desire to give. Unusual attack from the kingdom of darkness. These are signs that tell you a season is coming to an end. You don't want to be around people again. Something just isolates you to be alone. is because the master wants to speak to you. And if you don't understand these writings, you will keep wasting your time. There are things God will never tell you in public. You need to painfully know how to stay alone. Then his voice comes. Hallelujah. And God gave me an instruction. First, to bring a serious seed as a ministry and to sow. That seed itself was, I can tell you sincerely, at any level it will touch you. And then, then came the bigger instruction. And I'm saying this because I want you to understand. It's not to brag at all. God now told me that what I told the ministry to give, you give twice that amount. Ah. When you give Ishmael, you can drive him in one day, go away. But when God says to give Isaac, it will touch you. Isaac will touch you. Isaac Ba will touch you. But you see, I've worked with God a bit. And I know that every time God says, open your hand, it's not because of what is there. It's, about, it's because of what he's bringing. And with that sacrifice, I, I rejoiced in my pain as I honored God. God forbid that he will speak and I will not listen to him. Ladies and gentlemen, the rest is history. Another dimension opened for me that till forever. Listen, people do not just rise. The sacrifice of paying the price to build, are you willing to go through it? For someone, God can just call you and say, every night for the next three months, I want to meet with you. 12 to 3 it is me and you alone that is my covenant for the next three months it may not be for everybody but it's part of the preparation to birth and if you may even be a businessman that's what will surprise you and say god go and talk to them apostle and the rest and leave me in peace i thought you would teach me how to make money he's preparing you because when those billions come demons will say where did the money go to and they will follow your business and say we are here the king of Tyre just found out that something left heaven and did not pass through him to you. And so they will have to come and vet. And so God can tell a businessman, for three months you are not talking money with God. He, you are fasting and praying and building capacity. Afterwards, a door of business will open. And by the time people think you are just wearing suit and tie, they do not know that by sacrifice you brought yourself into the fivefold ministry. Ladies and gentlemen, I want to show you what separates men from boys. There are many people who do not want to pay the price. It is a language that our ignorant, sadly, and arrogant generation does not want to hear. Sharp, sharp everything. It is only God that will tell you the amount of times I've finished this Bible you are seeing. My former Bible, you open it and you will think there's writing everywhere. Sometimes I will write all kinds of things there because you are studying to show yourself approved that's why you see me quote scriptures and i can tell you what another version says you try it if you think it's a gift it's not a, you know we have this idea that god just magically endowed you no the grace i'm not downplaying the grace of god i hope you get what i'm saying you want to command power authority over nations you are going to have to stay with God are you ready to invest it with the spirit you don't have a track record with the Holy Ghost listen to me you come out like this just playing games and for show sure, you will only embarrass yourself for nothing it says but I know whom I have believed you came here tonight 
not just to meet God alone, but you came here to meet men whose blood are dripping upon the altar. He said, let no man trouble me, for I bear upon my body. There is a scar that the realm of the spirit knows. Jesus I know, Paul I know, Joshua Selman I know. You, it's, it's with blood you sign that signature. He that cometh unto God must come believing that he is the rewarder. While you are fasting, you know the rewarder is watching you. While you are praying, the rewarder is watching you. Somebody says, come and bribe and become a director. And you say no. And for that reason, your children pay the price for one year. The rewarder is watching. Can I tell you? If you do not know the rewarder, compromise will look pleasant if you do not know the rewarder all these cutting corners in ministry you can stay even if it's with five people with joy i know the rewarder is watching you are training the five people as if you are preaching in a stadium mentoring them because those five people are not your members they are your leaders you are training when your leaders are trained members can now come Are we together? Yes. Development is difficult. It took Jesus 18 years to be ready for ministry. 18, 1, 8. 18 years of actively building himself. Ladies and gentlemen, it's time for us to throw away premature manifestation and premature exposure and get back to the place where men are made made for their destinies are we together now the stage is not for rehearsal the stage is for manifestation if you want to rehearse go to the wilderness you will be given a chance to kill the lion don't come and stand before goliath to try trial and error will destroy you goliath is not playing games learn with the lion learn with the bear and master the art of war when you stand before goliath it is one one opportunity to bring him down listen you must master the mysteries of the presence of god you must master the mysteries of the anointing you must master the mystery of dominion. You must master the mysteries of influence. You must master the mysteries of the word of God. People will not just come and listen to you like that. Businessman, what have you read about business? Do you know the best people in your industry? Have you humbled yourself to learn from them? Or you are wallowing in the pride of saying everybody is a colleague. Run away from colleague mentality. That's what has kept many people down in this our arrogant generation. Just because great men are humble does not mean they are stupid. Know where you stand and draw the line with honor. No matter how humble our fathers are, sometimes a particular father of faith, I will not mention the name, but when we have the privilege of talking, sometimes you can say, ah, yeah, you know, I'm speaking to an apostle now. And I just laugh. I say, ah, daddy, don't, don't say that. Oh, he's still your boy. And we're laughing. Most of you, as they say that kind of thing, you carry it as a compliment. That a pastor is speaking to an apostle. What, what, what foolish indoctrination. These are men who, their tears move heaven. And heaven will say, who is making you cry? Is someone learning? You own a school. It's time to stop clapping for yourself and sit down. How can I make it the best? How can this be the greatest? You own a business. You are in ministry. It's time to stop. You, you cannot be going up and down every, every program, every show you are there. Jumping from pillar to post and you want the anointing to work in your life? No. Samuel was called a seer. You didn't see him out every time but when samuel came out people will know that god is about to say something because this guy has come out most of us have cheapened ourselves because you are everywhere doing everything hallelujah when others are sleeping you wake up in the night 
Father, for the sake of my destiny, I love you, but you are a rewarder. I came from a family where no one has risen. And I heard my parents tell me that they tried. I have made up my mind that I will be that savior. Lord, for the next seven months, it is two hours with you every night. Zakos Katabrakata. While you are doing that, you are in your small room. Don't worry. The rewarder is watching. The rewarder is watching. I sense in my spirit that God gave me this message because in this season, the rewarder is going to move again. Move from family to family. Move from ministry to ministry. There are some of you, hear me, you have served for a very long time and it looks like nobody has noticed you. I'm telling you prophetically, do not feel bad. I'm saying this by the spirit of the living God. The rewarder is going to have a convocation and say, I remember you paid the school fees of a young man in 2015. Nobody saw you to say thank you, but I have come as a rewarder that your children will never beg again because of what you have done. Hear me. When God wants to schedule a season of reward, the first thing he does is to put something in your hand. Exodus chapter 4. Give it to us, please. Exodus 4 and verse 2. I hope I got that right. Yes. This was the encounter. Exodus 4 and verse 2. And the Lord said unto Moses, What is that that is in your hand? There is always something in your hand that will be used to make your influence. Moses, you are about to be greatly magnified by God. That rod. And when you read the verses after he said to throw that rod on the ground, you must cast that rod and worship God with it. Until that rod is handed over to God to refine it. Now go to verse 17. Same Exodus 4 and verse 17. He said, thou shalt take this rod in your hand, wherewith thou shalt do signs. It was in your rod before, but nothing was upon it to do signs. Same rod, now with the anointing upon it, you can do signs. Same gift of singing. Sometimes I watch this, my precious people, as they worship, as they sing, and all the, the lovely people who just sang, and I'm looking at them. And you know, I keep praying that God will grant them the grace to keep building because you see, the value of the anointing is that it comes upon a prepared vessel. Let me say it again. The value of the anointing is that it comes upon a prepared vessel. When God calls you, he files you before anointing you. Most people want the anointing to come upon the unrefined version of them. While you wait for power, make sure you tarry in Jerusalem praying. While you wait for power, make sure you are not idle. Keep working on your leadership skills. While you wait for the anointing, keep working on your human relation skills. While you wait for the anointing, keep working to understand the dynamics of ministry. While you wait for the anointing, keep studying to be an excellent preacher. While you wait for the anointing, you want to become a leader by excellence, you want to become an educator, you want to become a business person. While you wait for the anointing, don't sit down and fold your arms. Wake up in the night, buy the books, go online, don't watch nonsense. Go online. Find valuable materials that relate to your destiny. All those exercises, are you preparing for the ministry of the rewarder? But I can tell you, the rewarder will always come. That's why you find out that ordinary men get to seasons where it looks like God just gives them visibility. And then we erroneously say they came from nowhere. There is nobody who comes out from nowhere. Hallelujah. Today I look at what God has graciously done in my life. And I'm truly humbled. My prayer is that God will use my life to inspire a generation. More than just planting pride. To help people know that spending time to market yourself is a total waste of time. Your marketing is to build your value. I'm saying this because something is going to come on someone shortly. I'm going to pray some prayers for you and for your destiny. There are doors. Remember, we are dealing with opening of doors. He said the gift of a man makes room for him. 
So when it's time for God to end the cycle of poverty in your family, it's not just the Esther anointing is going to drop. Before the Esther anointing arrives, listen carefully, he will now isolate at least one person who begins to get angry with that situation and say, Lord, things cannot continue like this. We can't continue living from hand to mouth. Our daughters and our sons will not keep prostituting themselves because they are looking for money. Lord, I will learn God's way of doing this. And God will plant a passion in that person. And he will begin to listen to tapes and teachings. The rewarder is watching. Remember, the more he's building himself, the more she's building herself, enduring the temptation for all kinds of compromises, preparing yourself for a great life. And after 10 years, the person will be running an organization that is multi-billion and people will say i used to know you you are right but not that version anymore not that version anymore not that version anymore can i tell you when it has to do with refining your potentials so that you schedule the seasons of reward don't spare yourself don't let your tears. We live in a generation that is excessively obsessed with comfort. We love comfort too much. Listen, comfort is when you have arrived, not when you are starting. A young man is about to start life and he wants a comfort of a veteran. He sits down with a 50, 60, 70 year old man and he wants the same kind of treatment. No, sir. Apostle, I got a job. They are just giving me 50,000 and I have to trek for 30 minutes. Go and ask parents who trek from one community to one community to go to a, a secondary school. For the man to become the professor that you see that he is today, he had to trek and with joy. It was even an honor for him that he could go to school. But our generation today, there are people who can have access. You can just walk 10 minutes, 20 minutes to a church. And you will sit down and follow online because of sheer laziness and then want a, a, a solid impartation to come upon you and then God will trust you with the destinies of men globally it doesn't work that way hallelujah my dear people are here sometimes I go online and I listen to their songs when I listen to their songs I call them and I say this thing you sang congratulations from a spiritual standpoint I was touched but from a technical standpoint, this and this and this is a mistake. Go and do it again. Go back to the studio. Walk again. Don't say, I don't have money. The money you got as honorarium is not for buying clothes. Go and invest in your mind. The one for clothes will come. Go and invest in your mind. Can I tell you, there are many of you right now, what you have around you is what has made your head empty. Because the money God gave you was supposed to be for your head. You denied your head of an opportunity to be rich in knowledge. And you kept creating a semblance of success whereas there was nothing there. It is better for people to know you have nothing physically. But that they can appreciate the investment of God's grace. How long did it take Pharaoh to decorate Joseph? They didn't decorate his mind. Decorating your body can happen in one day. I know the cloth does not look very nice, but you just invest in your spirit and your mind. The day the person sent to appreciate your value comes by God, that person can take you shopping in one day and buy your whole destiny for you. Are we together? I love that song. Prepare to sing it for me. Come, key strings. Okay. You just sing it one time for me. He wrote the song. I want you to just sing that song. It, said, it means fix me. We are stepping into a prophetic dimension in this teaching now. There are some of you, there are things you need to throw away. Throw away and make up your mind. Sing for me, key strings.
says fix me is a cry walk on me what does it take for my glory to rise fix me if it takes fasting fix it oh God if it takes prayer fix it oh God if it takes me going for trainings fix it oh God if it takes another level of education and knowledge fix me oh God but by all means by all means I refuse to remain ordinary by all means I refuse to remain a mediocre by all means hallelujah hear me listen to me the season of training is a very hard season you see some of my photos of many years as wonderful as those photos are you see some of us looking lean we look better than those days now but those are the days that made these days hallelujah emptying yourself in prayer emptying yourself in fasting raising the bar of your fire and your passion even when you are doing well you increase the bar of the marking script as if you are not doing anything hear me my dear generation hear me don't settle for less don't settle too cheap there are heights and the journey is far Remember my teaching last week. I challenge you on this wise and I'm still repeating it again. When it's time to announce the U.S. conference, I will tell you a very serious miracle that God did. It is, there are things that when God does, it just keeps you in awe. Hallelujah. Let me tell you sincerely, sincerely, and I'm saying this openly. There is no one pound, one euro that has been sent already for this conference. Every money that has been used to do everything so far has been the lavish giving of God's people with joy in their hearts. In spite of the limitation, we don't have an account provided yet. And people have squeezed in to say, I can't wait when when you stay and it builds you don't worry about supplies don't worry about a name 
don't worry about where you will get the donkey for the triumphant entry just make sure that your your gift and your talent is developed in one day god can open up a door someone can come and sing one song and the whole nation will place a demand on you in one day god can put you somewhere as a politician and as a businessman a dear woman i can't remember her name now i met her when i went to preach for my dear friend pastor kingsley in lagos and i meet this woman and she starts to tell me her story very touching story it's possible she's even watching or may get to hear this and what took her to the white house was moi moi making moi moi that's what scaled her till she got to the white house until today she's still doing it she shared with me her story and i was so touched i remember discussing with pastor kingsley's wife i said you have to do a documentary for this woman incredible anything can lift you if you refine it admiring people and wishing if i were more beautiful god knows if since you are not esther be something else you are not esther be deborah at least be something wishing you were esther is a waste of time if you cannot be the queen that king ahasuerus will marry then be deborah the warrior then be naomi then be this if you cannot be gideon be elijah if you cannot be elijah be samuel since you cannot fight learn how to prophesy but by all means make sure you do something can i tell you what god has put in your hand is enough to open the gates of your destiny listen to me thank god for those who have what you do not have but stop this season of blind admiration that makes you to demean what you have everybody can celebrate what you carry you just have not recognized it and refined it anything in its crude version is not worthy of being rewarded i know you are a great musician thank god for um david dam and sam and k strings and all these my precious people thank god for their lives but do you know that what god has put in you someday you can stand and share the stage and also celebrate jesus but it's good to be challenged by other people's giftings but please not at the detriment of what god gave you thank god for apostle joshua selman but what you are seeing is a refined version of something you may even have a greater version of anything looks bad when it is not refined including oil Go and ask those who work in the oil and gas sector. When you see oil in its raw and crude state, the smell alone will drive you away. You almost want to suffocate. Yet that's what cars will queue for for hours and say thank you for paying. Can I tell you this? God has already scheduled your destiny helper. I have taught you. Your destiny helper kept visiting you, but he found you in jealousy and anger, not working on yourself and they were authorized to go back i hope this year they will not come again and still find you who is still giving excuses and blaming demons and saying it's because my father was a drunkard that may not be the best but now that you know he's like that what do you have to do years ago i read a story and i've shared it many times while we're in zaria a man who raised two children was not a very responsible man unfortunately and he raised two children one would later become uh, a very bad person a nuisance to society and the other would grow to be some sort of businessman very responsible man and one time they had the opportunity to interview both of them and they asked the bad angry person why are you like that and he says what do you expect with the kind of father i had that was his excuse why are you bad and bringing trouble to society say what do you expect with the kind of father i had they now ask his successful brother why are you like this and say he's also answered the same way what do you expect with the kind of father i had for one person his father's negative situation was a challenge that made him say if i came from a poor family a poor family would not come out of me it was a determination 
For another person, he kept blaming. Some of you today will never rise because you are blaming everybody in your life. They didn't help me. I have an uncle somewhere. I even saw him the other day buying cars for his children and not for me. That is a, a mediocre excuse. Repent today and get back to work. Hold on the steering of your destiny with the determination of one who is working with God and begin to drive your life to a place of purpose. It is not because you came from a bad family. I don't downplay the pain that you came from, but or, or you or you pass through let me tell you there are many people who went through 10 times worse than experience than you and they have been able to reinvent themselves and to rise hallelujah many years ago there used to be someone in Joss I think he won one of these prizes for marathon years ago and we had the opportunity to meet him we're introduced to the man he used to climb a mountain with stones stones in a bag like rock stones you put it in a bag and be hiking up a mountain that was the way he trained himself for that kind of thing now he came from a village very poor village but then most people will see him in glory and not know that that was the price can i tell you do not be ashamed of your tears when you know that you are in a season of training don't pamper yourself if you must trek trek with honor if you must do zero zero one your meal do it with honor so that your children can do one 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 are we together apostle i don't have the opportunity to go to a very good school i'm now sending my children to some maybe some institution that i'm paying next to nothing they are not teaching them very much let the children make good use of that opportunity is better than nothing Tomorrow, God will supplement it. There are people like us that God is raising as midwives. I have a very powerful teaching here about the mystery of midwives. We'll discuss Mephibosheth and the mistakes of midwives. That midwives can destroy destinies. A man's destiny was crippled because of the carelessness of a midwife. A midwife is not just a medical practitioner. Anybody who helps people transit from where they are to where they need to be is a midwife. And you can produce Mephibosheth if you do not know how to raise men. That's a teaser for that series. Be around on that day. That day will be like the coming of Christ. I will not tell you. Just be ready. Hallelujah. How many of you here as worship ministers listening to me can truly say I am working on myself to a point where even if 10 million naira is given to me, it will not look like it is too much a reward. Do you know, I'm saying this with all humility. I remember days when I started preaching, I would go to preach doing my best and once I'm done preaching, you see the people discussing, they are obviously discussing what to do with me. And they will just put maybe rice in a pack away. And once they put it, they will just add, open a, a notebook and tear out a little sheet and just fold 100, 100 naira, maybe 1,000 and just say, man of God, you know that uh, may God bless you. And they will wait till I climb the bike to return me home first. Then they'll just smuggle it like bribery in my pocket. But I'll take it with joy. That was not my motive. But I knew that days will come when God will, his justice system will not allow that kind of thing to happen again. I didn't need, I have never, and I will never in my life tell anybody, give me this amount, give me this honor. No, never, never. The covenant of my call and my service prohibits that. I love him and I serve him truly. I would rather even sow into the lives of the people and bless them. Hallelujah. Sacrifice. I remember one time, I think I had preached in, uh, that was, um, I think somewhere in Ondo State. And we're done and we're, no, was it, that was Funabo, so I can't remember. And I was to return to have a meeting in Joss and it was by road. Ladies and gentlemen, look, let me tell you, when you go through the seasons of training, don't worry. Go through it with pain, but with gallancy and honor, knowing that there is a compensation system waiting for you. While you are rehearsing, my dear instrumentalist, don't, don't pamper yourself. Rehearse for hours. Learn the songs. Fast and pray. Receive songs from heaven. 
okay the first one that God used you to bring it didn't seem to be appreciated no problem go back again one night you will catch a fish that your net will be sinking and your boat will be break your, your, your net will be breaking and your boat will be sinking as a preacher keep being diligent pray and prepare fan yourself to flames don't try to expose yourself and say no me i'm here mm -mm. neither do men light a lamp you just keep adding fire a day will come when it's time for god to announce you he will put all your destiny helpers in front of you and then somebody will passively say help us and round up this service with one last prayer five minutes prayer let us pray god will sign on your tongue and sign on your voice in a way that someone will come and meet you and say we have a little conference the speaker is not coming again can you come and help us don't take it as an insult go and god will announce you until one day you stand on stage with the people you once admired and they will call you blessed businessman don't try to act like you're a billionaire well act in your mind but not by faking your life you're not there you're not there diligence will make you go there a day will come the people you are begging today to be an honor for you to sit at the same table to, for them to sit with you and they will share as colleagues but until then refine yourself i'm speaking to someone prophetically refine yourself have baked you will not rise to certain heights not by sentiments and not by anything apostle kings are not making a demand on me i'm a i'm a, a chef or i cook you cook as good as what can we ask you to come and cook for kings and be sure you will not disappoint them you know i've taught you when it has to do with the issue of value don't stop until the person you are serving is the king once you have not gotten into the palace don't stop you go to my house right now god is my witness you on my laptop there are videos i'm watching there are there are things i'm writing for my own personal growth as soon as i'm done finished with ministry activity i go back it's not an excuse to say I'm going to jump and sleep. I have daily routines that I must cover by covenant. Doesn't matter whether I'm tired or not. As I travel, they go with me. I finish preaching and while people are saying I was in the meeting, keep shouting under the anointing while I keep building myself. Lord, your boy is here again. Let's continue the training from where we stop. Your word tonight should be that song you heard. Fix me. Take away pride fix me take away complacency fix me take away flimsy excuses i know that nigeria is not in the best of state but there are people who it, even if jesus was the person in aso rock they will still suffer because their problem is in i'm, I I'm not saying that in a in a derogatory way forgive me but that they, they would still go through a a, a a hard life because intrinsically it's just easy to blame people and things you are ready to rise when you can take responsibility and say i've been a careless father nigeria is not the reason why my children are not in school i have not gotten up to take responsibility lord i have failed in my responsibility as a father and i apologize to my wife and my children i grew up from a background where i did not know much lord i am ready to learn my children will never be thrown out of school again i don't know what to do but i know that i'm not going back again and the spirit of wisdom will take it from there the first video you will watch you will find my video on productivity and fire comes from that video to now stabilize you first then you start following the mysteries of the kingdom and in one year it will look like a mistake you would have come out of that and you will build a scholarship fund after your pain to now help other children apostle we 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 come from a very terrible family that's why we're all struggling eight of us in one room for as long as you keep blaming someone that has died and gone for the reason why you are where you are there is no rising for you in my world there are no excuses i take responsibility for anything and everything that does not work and i get to work about it that's the mindset of a champion stop pointing hands at people and 
lay your hands on the floor and say lord grant me grace there is a reason why my ministry is not growing father i i love you with integrity of heart but what am i missing and the lord will say go and listen to apostles message the work of the ministry and you go and get that teaching and camp with it a message of one or two hours you will use four days to listen because you will keep pausing and praying pausing and praying finally you will find a few secrets and from there you will rise you must damage ignorance from your life fight it like you're fighting the devil mama don't say i am too old there's nothing i can do if there is nothing you can do you can pray if there is nothing you can do you can advise if there is nothing you can do you can call your sons and daughters and say i may not have made the most out of my life but my dear children in my lifetime i want you to rise up and surpass me i want to watch with my eyes your victory let it be a consolation to the things i could not do can i tell you anybody who goes through the same pain you went through that went before you um, you have not blessed them if you go through poverty make sure you are the last if you go through spiritual bankruptcy make sure you are the last if you made mistakes with your life and all kinds of things happen make sure you are the last you conquer any situation in life when you bring victory lessons out of it that can help other people hallelujah when we started what we were doing people hardly believed in what we were doing people made all kinds of statements and made it look like and I made up my mind from that experience that as much as God grants me grace, I will invest in younger ministers that are coming. Correct them when they are wrong, but encourage them. Hold their hands, whether groups as individuals, to help them. If they are stubborn and they don't choose to rise, no problem. That's a different thing. But for as many people who are determined to rise, I can tell you, for as long as I'm alive, we will use the influence, the resources, the rod of correction all together to help them rise well hallelujah I made up my mind that I was not going to be poor the devil had that confession he thought I was joking ask him now I made up my mind that nobody would cut short my life before my time it looked like an arrogant statement I watched many sincere people die by my left and my right I sympathize with so many of them but I'm happy that they, most of them have gone to be with the Lord. But I said, as for me, the fullness of my days I will fulfill. It is still my confession. I made up my mind that I will never raise a people who are just spiritual and bankrupt of influence. I knew that just speaking like that would not be the solution. I went to find out from those who have the proven track records, those who brought kings, the first lesson I learned was that anytime you speak, you must find a scripture that supports what you are saying. And I went to Genesis chapter 17 and verse 6. That's where I got my leadership principle. And I will make thee exceeding fruitful. And I will make nations of thee. And kings shall come out of you. It was an anchor scripture that I held. I said, Lord, I will never raise a small people. It doesn't matter what. I will never raise a small people. But the secret is the ministry of the spirit and the word of the spirit remember it is the mystery of the ten virgins it is not always about sin and righteousness you can be righteous and still fail the bible there showed that it is about sin and righteousness and then foolishness and wisdom you can be righteous and foolish like the five virgins you will still fail so once you deal with the issue of sin and righteousness, that is the first step. You must now start giving yourself a superior orientation to damage and erode foolishness from your life. The parable of the ten virgins was not about sinners. They were all virgins. All of them had the lamp, which is the word of God. But what they had was insufficiency of their relationship with the Holy Spirit. It took the lamp and the oil for light to come. You can have the lamp and not have the oil. fix me fix me fix the issue of pride fix the issue of laziness fix the issue of giving excuses oh god it is time for my destiny to rise 
you are the rewarder of them that diligently seek you he said let us not be weary in well doing for we will reap in due season if we faint not lord this is not the best of me as a man of god thank you for your help upon my life but i take responsibility the nations are not placing a demand upon my life because there is a level of ascendance in the spirit that i need to rise to that probably through carelessness or complacency or an early arrival mentality have not risen but by this message i take advantage and i begin to press there is a reward not for this version of you a higher version of you man of god the day god uses you to raise the dead that day you will not ask for partners again people will call you even while you are sleeping and say please send us your account number we want to give you a billion naira and you tell them till tomorrow and they will call you by 6 a.m and say i'm still waiting suffering is not generic your value or the absence of it is what defines your possibilities please try to believe what i'm telling you many years ago when i drove into this city there was a particular park not too far from here that I would go and stop. I would land there and then go to a restaurant that was close by there and eat before I now start exploring all the things that brought me. And I did that with joy because I knew that one day would be a, a story. Let me tell you something that happened. When we were graduating the School of Ministry students, the last set, so I needed to have a snapshot with them. And then they drove me round to come in, and I passed that area, and I just looked and I nodded my head. I remembered the features there, and I said, goodness, this life. Somebody you need to pray, fix me. So that your tomorrow will not be angry that you wasted your today. Let the 10-year-old version of you, look at me. I taught something years ago in Zaria. And I told them, I said, the 10-year version of you, 10 years before now, if he looks at you now, will he say, this was the person I wanted to become? Or will he say, you wasted the gift of time? Don't let the, 10, the next 10 years of your life look like the same. Because you keep giving excuses. My voice is not very nice. That's why I'm not singing well. You are unserious. Then write a good song and let those with good voices sing and give credit to you. I didn't have time to prepare my sermon for the teachings because I, I teach on Sunday and I teach midweek service. You know it's not easy. Respectfully speaking, flimsy excuse. Go and find out those who preach five to ten sermons in a week. And they have been doing that for many, 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 many years. I'm lazy spiritually now because I have children. No. 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 I'm not a giver now because times are hard. I used to go and buy books and invest in myself. But now I don't do so much. No. God is speaking to you because we are going to pray. And there is a grace that I pray to God for that will come upon you. Honestly speaking. The gift of a man. When God taught me this, it changed my life. I made up my mind that I will love God with all my heart. But my generation will never look at me as a non-entity. It's not pride. It's the truth. The secret is this. I found your word and I did eat it. I made up my mind that there is nowhere across this globe. I will not enter any circle where I'll be intimidated. I can be challenged for good. I can be provoked onto a greater sense, but not that I get somewhere and look at myself and feel miserable. No, I told myself that that dimension of shame, I will end it forever. There are places I enter today. There are people I meet today that I consider it an honorable privilege to sit with them, shake hands with them, talk with them, kings presidents of nations if i don't take it for granted but can i tell you it is not as a valueless person that i sit there 
it is not as a necessary luggage and carried there is with honor and gallancy to also contribute to their lives this is what God is training you to become so that you are like a battle axe whether you stand before kings and presidents and nobles you will honor them as touching what they represent but not to the detriment of your value hallelujah if I may not have the kind of intellectual soundness you want there is an anointing that can do something in your life if I may not have the vocal skills that you want I can pray and I have a covenant with God and he will come on your behalf my question for you as we prepare to pray is what is that rod in your hand there is a rod you have neglected while admiring others there is an anointing that has been hovering around your destiny waiting for your value waiting for you to build yourself listen to me the reward system in this kingdom answers to value you are a doctor rise to a level where you become an exceptional one and trust the God who announces men to announce you. You are a preacher, not for the sake of competition, but ladies and gentlemen, make a covenant with yourself and your destiny that no man will give you access to his pulpit. And while you stand and you are preaching, they are discussing among themselves. Let this be the last time this man returns here because he ended up wasting our time, wasting the time of our partners, wasting the time of all those who love this ministry. No, no excuses no excuses no excuses no excuses no excuses train yourself build yourself cry but train yourself cry but pray cry but go for trainings some of you after tonight you should go online and look for programs that you can do even if it's two week one month two month programs that can help to file your understanding or informally educate yourself there are materials online everything you are looking for you can find if you search with patience and with humility and determination let those who have results speak to you and mentor you and help you and build you hallelujah make up your mind that god will be able to trust you with the nations and you will not be a disappointment because of the excellency of your preparedness let me stop here the reward system of the kingdom therefore is based on God's ability to anoint your value listen carefully to anoint your value not just to anoint you to anoint your value to anoint your skill to anoint your ability ability that is developed ability that is refined ability that is ready to be deployed then the anointing comes upon it the union between the anointing, the engracing, the favor of the spirit and value that is refined is what schedules seasons of reward in this kingdom. Let me repeat for one last time, then we begin to pray. The union between the supernatural anointing of the Holy Spirit coming upon your value, your skill, your ability, your gifting that has been discovered developed and refined with pain patience sacrifice that is what schedules seasons of rewards are you a footballer huh you are a footballer come can we will never settle for less we know there's more that's found in you you are a footballer. You play football professionally. How long have you been in it? Huh? I, find, I find it hard when it is always time to my breakthrough to play. Like now, I was supposed to play for Oya Sports. When I went there, I can't even play the ball. Yes. No, listen, this is what I'm saying. Your gift, you have done your own work, but there's no anointing on it. You see? It is not skill alone. This is where the pride of the secular world comes. As powerful as your skill is, minus the anointing, 
the devil can rubbish you in one moment that's why i told you there is a grace that is coming because some of you in truth you have done your homework god brought you to church because the missing component that grace that must come upon the oil wants to multiply but the vessel is small now that you have taken time to expand the vessel the oil wants to multiply to fill up every vessel can i pray for you my friend I'll pray for you father in the name of Jesus I pray for this our dear one you are not ashamed you came to church and held a football in your hand that is a level of conviction and passion you are not ashamed of it I stretch my hands towards you and I pray in the name of Jesus the anointing that lifts men that comes upon their gifts May that grace rest upon you. Amen. May that grace rest upon you. Amen. May that grace rest upon you. Amen. I impart that anointing upon you. Amen. And in the name of Jesus, I open the two lift gates for you. Amen. I release you. Go and flourish. Amen. Go and prosper. Amen. In the name of Jesus. Amen. That's how it works. Your skill and your gift. Listen carefully now. Watch this. My friend, the day you will come to stand here, remind everybody of this thing that happened. Go. Watch this. While Jesus was struggling to learn, the Holy Ghost acted as if he did not see him. Till after 30 years when Jesus was prepared, he now came to John in the wilderness. Right? John baptizes Jesus. Then the heavens are opened and the Holy Ghost now comes. You would think that he did not see Jesus. Some of you here are yet to walk on yourself. There is no need doing any impartation because the truth is that it's going to be a waste. The only impartation you need is grace and the stamina, the staying power resilience to keep pushing whether in ministry business professional life and pursuit but there are others in all honesty scattered across this crowd following online you are saying apostle i don't mean to be arrogant but i sincerely can admit to you that god has helped me i have done my homework in ministry i have done my homework in business it is for such i want to welcome you by this impartation you are about to receive now you saw what happened to our dear footballer gentleman there is an anointing believe me that can come upon men we don't just walk by skill alone that is why i told you the reward system of the kingdom is the union i will emphasize again between value refined value that is prepared to be deployed and then the engracing of the spirit when these two combine together there is no limit to how far a man can go. It would be stupid and arrogant for many, many, many years before now to imagine that we'll be influencing people across the globe to go from one nation to the other and keep that nation at a standstill. It was a phenomenal meeting that we had in Kenya last, last year, I think it was. Within a span of one to two months, the planning, no publicity material, that I'm, I'm aware billboards and the rest none 65,000 people phenomenal meeting by the spirit the fathers of the land there told me according to them that the last time a meeting like this happened was when Maurice Sorulo came and the spiritual father of the man who hosted me we were there with him and he was telling me because he was Maurice Sorulo's interpreter and the fathers were broken and humbled and say we see the fire of revival returning to Kenya again it does not happen by luck I don't know what height you want God to take you in to but in the next two minutes for the sake of time please no distraction I want you to cry out your destiny before your maker in the name of Jesus present that rod in your hand to God go ahead is it your music ministry is it your business what is the rod you want God to anoint tonight 
that with it you will use to schedule a season of financial rewards rewards in terms of influence and visibility cry before god lord i may not have much but here is my heart my mind my everything take it it's yours alone go ahead and pray lord i hand over this prophetic ministry i may not have much but this is the grace you have given me lord you have given me extraordinary intelligence lord you have given me beauty and physical appearance lord you have given me nobility of stature like saul someone pray lord you have given me the teaching ability you have made me a phenomenal teacher you have made me an artist a sportsman a career person come on someone lift up your voice and pray I hand it over to you. That rod you have given me. You've given me the grace for entrepreneurship. My passion cannot be wasted. You've given me a heart for children. You've called me into the healing ministry. You've called me into the prophetic ministry. Someone pray, someone pray, someone pray. Your value, the reward system of the kingdom works with your value, your skill, your ability. Obtain grace to refine it. Obtain grace to discover. Obtain grace to refine. The nations are waiting to be used by God to reward you. Ali, Ali, oh. Ali, oh. Ali, oh. Ali, Ali, oh. Oh, 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 oh. Ali, Ali, oh. Ali, oh. Oh, 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 oh. Ali, Ali, oh. Mantles are falling here tonight. Anointings are falling here tonight. Are falling here tonight for the kings to arise, for the kings to be born, for the kings to arise, for revival to be born. Ali 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 Someone pray. Father, it's time for the nations to drink of the grace you have placed upon my life. It's time for the nations to partake of my business acumen, of the prophetic grace, of the ministerial grace, the teaching mantle.
Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Please hear me. I'm about to pray now. Listen carefully. When I was teaching you on finances, and we have another series that I want you to really pay attention to when it's time, I taught you that our rewards in life, as I have learned, will always be in exact ratio to three things number one the need or the demand for what you do number two your ability or proficiency in doing what you do and number three the difficulty in replacing you in business we call it the law of compensation this is what guides the reward system that every time you become so valuable that kings can look for you, nobles can look for you, nations can look for you, placing a demand upon the grace of God in, on your life, whether in with respect to business endeavors or your professional life or ministry. Make up your mind to not be a mediocre. Go back home after this sermon and don't just rejoice that you came to church and heard a powerful sermon. Go back and discipline yourself prune out every kind of laziness and laxity from your life and obtain grace and be determined tonight under God that you will not rest until your value gets to the throne serving kings and nobles Hebrews chapter 11 and verse 6 for without faith it is impossible to please him the Bible says for he that cometh to God must come believing that he exists and then that he is a rewarder of them that diligently seek him god rewards we serve him because we love him and forever this will be the highest motivation our love for jesus our desire to see his glory revealed and the privilege he's given us to be a blessing to the nations but in addition to that do not think it evil to position yourself to live a rewarded life. Financial reward, psychological rewards like honor, prestige, influence. These are all rewards. Rewards are not just money. Money is only one of the many channels. Influence. When people give you the gift of trust, loyalty, the capacity to influence them by reason of the effective deployment that's what Miles Munro taught me. That leadership is not about leading people. Leadership is about excelling in your gift. Serving people with your gift with such excellence that you get a reward of loyalty back from the people by reason of the effective deployment of your gift. Not lording over people. Leadership is about serving people with your gift. Your service becomes so exceptional that you receive as a reward the gift of loyalty. I'm about to pray for you. We are not inventors of this grace. We are only recipients, graceful recipients of this grace. To someone here tonight who has labored in the spirit, fasting in silence, to someone here who has labored in the spirit, praying and traveling, turning days to weeks and weeks to months and months to years for someone here who has served served from church to church from man of God to man of God serving graces and may have never been rewarded physically for someone here you have spent time to educate your mind in training consultations paid the price to go within and outside this nation to build intellectual capacity to someone here you have submitted yourself methodically to mentorship you have done your due diligence for someone you have taken extra courses you have stretched yourself to the border now you are the corridors of influence it's time for this grace to come upon you 
let me speak upon your life Father, in the name of Jesus, you have anointed me to be an extension of your possibilities to your people. I stretch my hand so God as you have led me to teach your people tonight. They have learned the principles that control the reward system of the kingdom. Many have invested in their gifts, their potentials, their abilities. They've paid the price to laboriously refine themselves and in truth, they are in a position right now where they can serve regions and nations. Therefore, I stretch my hands. As many who are in that position, let the anointing that was designed to connect with your gift at the count of three, Marques Koteba, one, get ready, two, my goodness, three, take that anointing now. Take that anointing now. Take that anointing now. Take that anointing by the power of the Holy Ghost. Receive that engracing that comes upon your gift. Receive that engracing upon your teaching ministry, upon your business, upon your professional life, upon whatever it is that you do. Receive it in the name of Jesus. I decree and declare by this anointing, find visibility. By this anointing, find visibility. I connect you, Shabeka Toskatia. By the mystery of this anointing, connect to your financial helpers. By this anointing, connect to your endorsers. Hear me? Everybody who has the leverage of credibility, that can lift you and announce you whether in ministry, in business, in career I stretch my hands this week connect with them by faith for a man of God may God bring you an invitation that opens up the next season of your ministry for someone may God bring a sponsor that will overwrite your budget and give you the concentration to walk. For a professional here, in the name of Jesus, I program institutions to call for your, your value, not just individuals. I'm saying it uh, prophetically. I call for institutions, not just individuals, to place value on what you carry. Hear me, there are people who here who are ready and are prepared, but the negative speakings of others is what has stopped your helpers from coming. Every wrong statement that has been said about you that is stopping your helpers and those who can be used by God to reward you from reaching you, I cancel that statement now. By this prophetic decree and this impartation, every dead vision, dead business, dead ministry, dead destiny, hear the word of the Lord, jack back to life now. A gentleman invented a drone. I think he should be, he'll be somewhere here in the congregation. And he built, he built all kinds of electronic gadgets. And he built something so phenomenal. I remember when he came and showed me. I looked at it and I said, this is, this is incredible. And I prayed a simple prayer for him. May God connect you to people who have the interest and the resources to invest in your vision and your value. And the rest is history. How God just opened the door and connected him to one person willing to invest millions of dollars into that project. It is not difficult, not when the prophetic directs them. I declare again by prophecy, anybody who needs to be directed to your path to invest in your dream, invest in your church, invest in your vision, invest in the quality of your life for the sake of your assignment and your mandate. I declare by prophecy, may they be directed so.
I also release upon you the grace for non-stop continuous development. Non-stop pursuit of God. Non-stop pursuit of capacity building. Both in the spirit and intellectually. And in the name of Jesus, that local champion mentality, that mentality of endorsing yourself among mediocres, by the privilege of God's grace and for the sake of the greater that he's bringing to your life, get out of that mentality now. The spirit of unhealthy comparison, wrong sense of competition, that drives people into early arrival mentality or frustrates them and deflates their passion to go forward. I declare that that wrong mentality leaves your mind now. <laughs> Hear me. I challenge you, some of you, when you go back home, sit down as husband and wife, sit down as father and daughter, sit down as mother and son or daughter and discuss this teaching. Take it as a challenge and start doing something. No matter how you fall and fly under the anointing, it will be a total waste if you don't take responsibility and sit down. For some of you, as you return back home, is to have a little nap, eat, refresh, rest, and get up and start writing covenant daily tasks that improve yourself. I must watch two videos as touching this, my music ability, or this, my my uh, tailoring i'm tired of sewing clothes for mediocres who will keep owing me and insult me i i need to serve those who have the, um, the who don't ask how much again and i must work on myself go for training build yourself while praying in tongues lord i received an anointing i will not waste this investment you keep expanding yourself that's what you need to do you are a man of god trust god for grace listen carefully go online study Build yourself, not from a competitive standpoint. Don't run around looking for open doors. Just relax and build yourself in fastings, in prayer. Build capacity in the spirit. God has given you the healing ministry. Don't let people doubt your call. The Bible says to, to give all diligence to these things to make your calling and your election sure. And for those of you who are outside of this nation, make sure you maximize our coming to your regions. It's an opportunity by God to connect and to receive. Have you been blessed tonight? Wave your hands to Jesus and give him praise for the word. The reward system of the kingdom. Let me make an altar call right now very quickly. And then I speak prophetically to your life finally to wrap up the service. But it is my prayer that from Sunday, we'll begin to hear people come and testify here. That they'll say their lives just changed like light and day by reason of this mystery you have accessed. You are here and you are saying, Apostle, I need Jesus. I need to rededicate my heart to Jesus or I am making this decision for the first time. Please make sure that you are not confused with the rush. I know that people are, you know, moving up and down. Let's minimize movement so that we respect the altar call. For the sake of one person here who heard the word, and whilst you were listening, Jesus was speaking to you and saying, when the altar call is made, rush out here to make it right with Jesus. Whether you are making this decision the first time or you are rededicating your heart to Jesus, it is never too late to make it right with him. I'm counting one to five for the sake of time very quickly. Boldly leave your seat, leave wherever you are, and I want you to come and stand here. I begin my counting now. One, come. 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 Be it unto me according to your word, according to your promises. I can stand secured. Keep coming. Will you carve upon my heart the truth that sets me free according to your word of Lord be it unto me come come God bless you let's celebrate them still a few more people boldly coming to Jesus he's able to save even unto the uttermost he can give you a new beginning he can make all things new for you
This is why he brought you to church. If you're coming from outside, please join them very quickly. And those who are following online and by way of the internet, here's your chance to make Jesus Lord of your life. Distance is no barrier. Connect by faith. And in doing so, believe that he's giving you a new beginning. Thank you very much, ladies and gentlemen, for coming. You have responded to the cry of the Spirit. You're joining them. Please come very quickly. I'm about to lead them to pray. Thank you. Thank you. It always starts with Jesus. Always starts with Jesus. He's the foundation, the cornerstone, the bedrock. Lift your right hand high above your head, if you will, as a sign of total surrender to Jesus. And then I want you to say this after me as loud and as clear as you can. Say, Lord Jesus. Go ahead. Say, Lord Jesus. Tonight, I have heard your word. I believe that you died for me. I believe that you rose again for my justification right now. I receive Jesus into my heart as my Savior, my Lord, and my King. I declare that the power of sin, Satan, hell, and the grave is broken over my life. From tonight, and forever I am a child of God what's that can you imagine hold these people huh. I command every foul spirit out of her right now out now I curse that spirit the name of Jesus let me pray for the people. This is, this is the price of an apostolic ministry. In the name of Jesus Christ, I declare over all of you, by the power of the Holy Spirit, the power of sin, Satan. I'm seeing the anointing come on one of you right now. Just a strong anointing come on one of you right now. In the name of Jesus, I call you the righteousness of God in Christ Jesus. And I declare that everything that is not of God, let it give way. Everything that is not of God, let it give way. You are saved right now, saved forever. In the name of Jesus, may the Lord bless you and increase you in Jesus' name. Now very quickly, do me a favor. I want you to please move to my right, which will be your left. You are going to see the counselors. They will have a word with you. And very quickly, you will come back to your seat. Let's honor them as they go. Just gently carry, if you can, the person under the anointing. It's unfortunate. You know, listen. Do you know what? Hello. Scriptures exhort us from the book of Proverbs. It says, My son, attend to my sins. Incline thy ears to my words. Let them not depart from thy eyes and keep them in the midst of thee. As you have listened to this message, we believe that you are going to reap the blessings thereof if you attend to these words as well. That you will keep these words in the midst of your heart. That no matter the circumstance, your eyes are going to be fixed on these words. And as you have been blessed, we will tell you to share this message. Be an evangelist by sharing to others to be blessed. And then subscribe to this channel for us because we have loads of videos. We have loads of content that is going to make you blessed. That is going to set you on course. That is going to set you ablaze. And don't forget to like for us. Thank you.